In section 4.1, we get a brief introduction to the topic of probability. And probability is something that you may or may not have run across before in uh, kind of informal terms where somebody talks about the odds of something happening or the probability or the chances of something happening. Like, for instance, when you read a weather report and it says that the chance of rain is 80%, that's a probability statement stating that it's fairly likely that it will rain. So in this first section, we get the early concepts behind probability, and then we'll build on them in the later sections in this chapter. So there's a bit of terminology here at the beginning of the section. Uh, we use the term experiment to mean something that we do, and then we calculate the probability of something happening. So for instance, you'll see examples where we draw a card from a deck and we calculate the probability that our card comes out a certain way. The experiment is drawing the card from the deck. Or we'll have experiments where we roll a die, et cetera, et cetera. So the experiment is the thing that we perform and then calculate a probability of something happening. Then we have an outcome. That's one of the possibilities for what could happen. So when you roll a six-sided die, for example, there are six potential outcomes. It could come up a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. And then we have the sample space, which is basically just a list of all the possible outcomes. So there's an example here of one way to write a sample space with these curly braces, and then we list the outcomes uh, in order. And the order doesn't really matter. We're just listing uh, the possibilities that could happen. There are a couple other ways that you'll see later on in this chapter for how to describe the potential outcomes but this is the earliest and most basic way of doing it, just accounting for all possibilities. Obviously, if there are too many possibilities, this isn't really practical to write down. If there are a thousand possible outcomes, you wouldn't sit here and write down the whole sample space, but for relatively small ones, it's easy enough to sketch it quickly like this. So we have each outcome in this sample space, and then we can create events, which could be one outcome or they could be several. So for example, if you define the event rolling a one, that would correspond to one outcome. But if you said rolling an odd number, that would correspond to three of the outcomes, the one, the three, and the five. So an event could be one outcome or it could be multiple ones combined together. So here's a few examples of building sample spaces, just thinking through the possibilities for what can happen in an experiment. So you can read through those and follow along. Then there's a quick discussion of some rules of probability. And these look more complicated than they are. Basically, the first rule says that when you get an answer for a probability, it's going to be somewhere between 0 and 1. Or if you're thinking in percentages, somewhere between 0 and 100%. So all your answers need to be in that range. If you ever get an answer that's over 1, that means that you made a mistake somewhere. Or if you get a negative answer, that means there's a mistake somewhere. If the probability equals 0, that means it cannot happen. If a probability equals 1, that means it's absolutely certain to happen. And then lastly, if you add up all the probabilities of all the outcomes, you're going to get 1. So once we've done some examples, you can see, for instance, that in the example of rolling the die, there are six outcomes. Each of them has a probability of 1 in 6. And if you add 1 sixth repeatedly, if you add up all those probabilities, the answer you get is one, the total for all the outcomes. And that's always going to happen. There are two types of probability you will talk about in this section. The first is theoretical. The second is empirical. Basically, the difference between them is that theoretical probability happens where we imagine an experiment taking place and we reason out based on what we know what the probabilities will be. So for instance, we picture a die being rolled. We don't actually do it. We just imagine it happening. And based on the fact that it has six sides, and each of them is equally likely to come up, we figure the probability of each number is one in six. That's the basic principle behind theoretical probability. Empirical probability is when we actually have done an experiment, and we have some data. So for instance, the example I always use is in sports, a lot of times we use things like this. Uh, in baseball, for instance, you have a batting average, and each player has their batting average which is basically a measure of the likelihood they'll get a hit each time they come to the plate. Uh, 
based on how often they've gotten a hit in the past. Or in basketball, for instance, you might talk about someone's free throw percentage. And if they're a 70% free throw shooter, that means they've made 70% of their free throws in the past, and you assume that when they come to the line to shoot a free throw, that they have a 70% chance of making this one. So that's the empirical side. And that's when we have some data to work on. Empirical just means based on data. So those are the two sides of things. One where we're imagining an experiment and based on some simple rules, we can figure out the probability. Empirical is when we have data to look back on. So with theoretical probability, the basic calculation you'll use over and over and over again is you'll count the total number of possibilities for what could happen. So if we roll a die, there are six possibilities for what could happen. And then you count up how many of those fit your event, whatever the event you're interested in, how many of them fit that category, and then you divide those two. Empirical works the same way. You still divide the, the number of times that your event has taken place by the total number of times you've run the experiment. So it's the same principle, and we'll see that a little later on. So there's a few examples here of simple ones with rolling a die, drawing a card, and calculating the probability for each one of those, just using that simple rule of counting the total number of outcomes and then how many of them fit our description. There's a diagram here that you might find helpful uh, of a standard deck of cards. There are 52 cards in these four suits, and you can uh, read the rest of the description there, but you can refer to this whenever you need to for questions involving cards if you're not familiar with that deck. There's another example here of the same thing. You can follow through that, and that gives us a sense of that theoretical probability basis. Then we get to the empirical probability, and again, it's what I described earlier, that we have some data from the past, and generally we use this when there's just no way to imagine what would happen. You have to actually see what happened. There's no way to imagine what could happen when a batter comes to the plate. There's just too many possibilities uh, for what could take place, and without any past data, we can't make predictions for that particular batter. And as you look through the, the examples that follow, generally the information we're given is going to be arranged in a table like this, where we have a total number and then a breakdown into several different groups, and you'll see that in those examples. And then we introduce a two-way table, or a contingency table, um, and we can use these uh, in a similar way uh, to calculate probabilities of being in certain categories. So you can follow through this example. Uh, make sure you follow it carefully. Watch the video as needed to get the details behind that. Uh, there's a little example here at the end that's not really something you'll do for the homework, but it's an illustration of this principle that we can imagine what would happen ahead of time, rolling a die, but you can also run an experiment, and there's an example showing that uh, the experimental results do match the, um, the results of, of the prediction. So that brings us to the end of section 4.1. The basic principle is that there's theoretical and empirical probability. In both cases, you're dividing the number of outcomes or the number of times something has happened by the total, and that gives you the probability you're looking for.